There are three people currently running to replace Stephen McNeil as the provincial leader of the Liberal Party and as Premier of Nova Scotia. They are Randy DeLore, Ian Rankin, and the man that I'm just about to talk to right now, Labby Kasoulis. He's the MLA for Halifax Citadel Sable Island and the former Minister of Labour and Advanced Education. I caught up with him at the Fleur de Lis dining room in Port Hawkesbury. Here's that interview right now. And joining us here in Port Hawkesbury is Liberal leadership candidate Labby Kasoulis. Mr. Kasoulis, thank you for joining us on Telil 24-7 today. My pleasure. Great to be here. You're joining us at a very busy time in your campaign. You were in Arishat 24 hours ago. Now you're in Port Hawkesbury. At this stage, how do you feel the early parts of your campaign are going? Oh, they've been going great uh, from, from the start of the campaign till today. And we'll take it right to the finish line. The campaign's been positive. Uh, it's been a great honor to be traveling the province, talking to Nova Scotians, and, uh, you know, it's been an excellent campaign. You're here in the Strait area with a familiar face to local voters, the longtime MLA for Richmond and Cape Breton Richmond, as well as your former cabinet colleague, Michelle Sampson. How does it feel to have his support at this stage of your liberal leadership campaign? Michelle was an old friend, and, uh, you know, we became very close when I was elected in 2013, and, uh, his experience was uh, guidance. He had many years' experience in the legislature, and uh, he was always uh, a great asset to myself and to our team. In addition to your visits to Port Hawkesbury and Arishat, you opened a new campaign office in the Sydney area this week, and you spent the first week of your leadership campaign in Cape Breton. Why did you feel it was necessary to concentrate on this part of the province at this time? Well, Cape Breton's an important part of the province. It's uh, the second largest municipality and you know I said early on and I say it to this day and I'll keep saying it in the future that you know for Nova Scotia to thrive Cape, Cape Breton has to thrive and vice versa you know we uh, you know Cape Breton needs the province but the province needs Cape Breton and we're going to ensure that we're both working hand in hand and moving the entire province forward. We're in a small business for this interview, one of several here in the Strait area, and that leads me to a question about the small business focus that you've taken on as part of the first couple of weeks of your leadership campaign. Just before arriving in Cape Breton, you announced that if you become Liberal leader in February, you would institute a $60 million small business tax relief plan. I know you come from the small business sector yourself, you have some experience in this area, so can you tell me a little bit more about your focus on small business at this time? Yeah, well, the if you look at all the programs that came out, they did a great job of covering very large, uh, large organizations, large companies, and our programs from the federal government covered the, the small individual. So I felt those were important, but if we actually look at our, our province, look at our country, small business is the backbone of our entire tax system. And I felt that they weren't, um, they weren't getting enough support. And my worry was that if our small businesses were not getting the support and not getting through COVID, we weren't going to have a tax base to pay for all these services that we require and that we use every day post-COVID. One industry in Cape Breton and around Nova Scotia that took a major hit as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic is tourism. And I noticed that that's a focus of some of the recent platform planks you've put out for your Liberal leadership campaign as well. You recently announced that you'd like to see a year-round tourist season that puts more focus on 12 months of the year as opposed to the warm weather months. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, so a big part of that is it, should be, it has to be a focus because we already have all of the infrastructure in place and we're only utilizing it for less than half the year. With the infrastructure in place, any more revenues we can get that industry goes right to their bottom line throughout the year. So when I look at the tourism sector across the province and especially here in Cape Breton, um, great opportunity. As we know, Cape Breton was voted the most beautiful island in Canada. And what we have to do is look at what are our winter opportunities? Um, what sort of um, experience can we give people that they'll want to come here in the winter? And as well, tourism is a, it's a green economy because, um, you know, the visitors coming here, we can give them an experience that is uh, very green in nature, good paying jobs. And, you know, I'd like to keep the individuals in that industry uh, working all year round. 
you know, we could expand our winter trail system. Um, we could look at uh, the investments that all, all have already been made up at Cape Smoky, and there's a major investment happening there. That's going to keep attracting people to the area. And as we do that, it's just going to be very positive for all of Cape Breton. Mr. Ksoulis, we're going to talk tech right now because your campaign is putting a real focus on the tech sector, not just here in Cape Breton, but around Nova Scotia. Why is this such a big priority for you? And what do you feel you can do even on the local level for issues such as full high-speed internet coverage? Yeah. So the when I came to uh, Cape Breton I, with the tech sector, I saw a huge opportunity. I was amazed at the amount of uh, mature companies who are employing Cape Bretoners, um, were selling their products not only in Cape Breton but throughout the world. And um, as I asked the entrepreneurs in Cape Breton what the opportunities were, um, there was one gap that I discovered and that was seed money to get an entrepreneur started. So that's why I announced that we would invest $1 million annually, which should fund about 20 entrepreneurs a year. But more importantly, the decision making is not going to be in Halifax, it's going to be here in Cape Breton, um, a job on the ground, and that individual will be making investment decisions for Cape Bretoners. Can you talk a bit about why your Liberal Leadership Campaign also prioritizes bringing more immigrants to the area, especially international students? Definitely. Um, if you look at the success across the province as a whole, and let's recognize that not all areas have had the, uh, the success to that level, um, one aspect in the last seven years, when we came into government, we were getting approximately 500 immigrants a year. When we jumped to 5,000 immigrants a year, our unemployment went to the lowest level ever in our history. And, you know, you saw areas thriving. Cape Bretoners saw it happen up in, up in Sydney when we had an influx of international students. You know, people very quickly noticed our, the apartments are full, the restaurants are full. Um, we're filling jobs, um, more and more businesses are opening to service the thousands of new students that have come. I kept hearing a common theme, find a way for the province to keep the international students here after they graduate. So that's what I'm doing with the immigration services. Um, again, it'll be the jobs move to Cape Breton to put the strategy in place for Cape Bretoners to also have the international students stay um, stay here. Let's shift the focus to healthcare, Mr. Kasoulis. The Strait area has been very active in recruiting general physicians to be able to come to the area. I'm wondering how you would help those particular doctor recruitment efforts and how you would look at healthcare from a provincial perspective in providing the services that our people need. So, um, in terms of healthcare, we have to really keep our focus on attracting GPs and retaining them. Um, this is a challenge in all of uh, the country, so we're competing with every other province for this. And we also have to look at when we um, do have our GPs here, how can we make them more efficient? So, when I launched my healthcare policy, I spoke about making investments in nurse professionals for our doctors so that they can provide better services to their patients. And that means more timely access, because it's one thing not to have a doctor, but it's also another challenge when you have a doctor and you can't see them in a timely manner. So we want to make them more efficient. I also made a commitment to telehealth, and I made a commitment to virtual care, which is a patient talking to their doctor on the phone or via video conference. And a big part of it is that we need to ensure that we're using technology to increase our access. And you know, let's think about it. An individual who is, um, you know, might not have mobility, might not have a vehicle, but lives far away from the doctor, that's a great way for them to have a doctor's visit. But we need, whatever that policy becomes, we need it to be patient focused. And that was the other part of my announcement as well. We're in Port Hawkesbury today for this interview, just down the road from the Strait Area Campus and Nautical Institute for the Nova Scotia Community College. Your most recent cabinet portfolio, one that you held for a long time, was that of the Minister of Labor and Advanced Education, so you know the community college system well. What kind of support do you feel that a lobby Casulis government could offer to community colleges like those here in the Strait Area? Well, we've already been doing it. So even as the minister, if you look at the new Sydney waterfront location, 
That's a $400 million investment into Cape Breton Island, which came through my department. And it's, um, you know, individuals are already talking about how it's going to revitalize downtown. It's going to be an anchor, and, you know, I'm excited to see it um, progress. When I was up there, construction's already started and well underway, and it's going to be a it's going to be a phenomenal um, it's going to be a phenomenal piece of infrastructure right on the waterfront and revitalizing that whole part of the city. Mr. Kasoulis, I'd like to shift from the advanced education portion of your most recent portfolio to the labor portion. Although there is an education component in this question as well. The Liberal government here in Nova Scotia has had an often fractious relationship with those seeking to provide public education to our students, specifically to the teachers. And I am wondering, if you do become the Liberal leader and premier in February, what would a Labi Kasoulis government do to try to heal the wounds that have arisen over the past eight years in terms of teacher relationships, but also to provide basic public education to our students? Yeah, and education's the one of the most important services government offers, and education levels the playing field for all of our kids to make sure they have a successful um, start in their life and in their career. Um, which is also one of the reasons why uh, on our student loans I made them fully forgivable for Nova Scotia students. Um, and last year we expanded at the N NSCC as well. So I think all Nova Scotians should recognize that, you know, no matter what your social economic background, um, your child going to university or college, if they get a student loan, all they have to do is graduate and we wipe it out to zero. Um, but taking that back to education, um, where the focus has to be is on the kids and the more we focus on the kids um, and teachers care about the kids the more that we're going to be in sync and we're going to be moving education forward um, we've had a major focus on improving our cl the classroom since elected in 2013 we've added 1,000 net new teachers so when we were elected there was 10,000 now we're up to 11,000 that makes the classroom better and makes the learning environment better and we just have to make sure that we keep focusing on the kids, giving them the best education we can, which is what we all want. If you do become Premier Lobby Kasoulis at the end of the Liberal leadership race in February, what kind of leadership style would you bring both to the party and the government, but also the province? A big part of it is, um, you know, I'll be collaborative, bringing the best ideas forward. Um, but once we know what those ideas are, we're going to action on them quickly. So. My Cape Breton platform was all formed by Cape Bretoners giving me ideas and you know with the knowledge I've gained over the last seven years in cabinet and over the knowledge I gained throughout my career as a small business owner in, in Nova Scotia, as a, as a business person who spent half their career living in rural Nova Scotia, um, those were things I could action on right away. But I also communicated to Cape Bretoners that you know I launched with four items I'd like to have another four to six items added to it because my, the way I'm going to do economic development is I'm not going to look for one industry or one employer to come in and solve all our problems. It's going to be Nova Scotia solving our problems and it's going to be a diversified economy and when one employer closes, we're going to absorb all those people um, within the robustness we have and within all the other organizations. Um, in a pandemic, we have to look at making sure our people transition both from a health perspective and an economic perspective, and that has to be our short-term focus, and make sure people can, you know, put food on the table and, uh, you know, pay the rent and the mortgage. Well, we have appreciated getting so many of your perspectives today, Mr. Kasula, so thank you for joining us for this interview for Till Hill 24-7. Thank you, my pleasure. Labi Kasoulis is the MLA for Halifax Citadel Sable Island and he is running for the provincial liberal leadership. We've been speaking to him today at the Fleur de Lis restaurant in Port Hawkesbury.